In this video, we're going to look at how we can determine the delta H of reaction from standard heats of formation. So in the last video, we defined a standard heat of formation, and we said that this is basically the, ener the enthalpy required to take elements in their standard state, which have zero heat of formation, and bring them to a compound under standard conditions. So uh, in essence, we said that this difference in heat, um, or this enthalpy, um, gives us the enthalpy change for the formation of a compound relative to a reference point of zero. So let's just kind of look at an example here. Let's say that we wanted to figure out what the delta H for H2O gas goes to H2O liquid is. So this is a simple one. And we want to know what is the delta H of reaction here under standard conditions. So again, this little knot up here indicates standard conditions. So this is taking place at standard conditions. Uh, and we want to know, well, what is the delta H for this reaction? So we can go into the table of Appendix C and we can look up the values for delta H of formation for H2O gas. And we can look up the delta H of formation for H2O liquid. And so the liquid is at minus 285.8 kilojoules. And the gas is at minus 241.8 kilojoules. So now let's just refresh our memory with a graphical depiction of what this means. So uh, remember, when we set this up, we have our reaction progress over here going in that direction. We have delta H naught going in this direction. And what's interesting is, in both cases, the delta H of formation, so if we were to write the delta H of formation for H2O gas, we're going to take H2 gas, that's one of the elements, plus O2 gas, that's the other element, and we're going to make H2O gas, and that's our product. So we have to balance this, and um, we're going to put a one half here because we, we only want to make one mole. So that delta H of formation that I looked up in the appendix is the delta H of, for this reaction that we wrote, 241.8 kilojoules. And you'll notice that we can, for the formation of the liquid, it's going to be the same left side because, again, the elements are the same. So we get H2O liquid, and this is going to give us a delta H of formation for this equal to uh, minus 285.8 kilojoules. So this is the reason why I chose this example was because it just so happens that both of these compounds have the same starting point. But it doesn't matter. We could have different starting points. They're all going to still be at zero because they're the elements in their standard state. So in this case, it just so happens that these happen to have the same H2 plus 1 half O2 gas over here. But as we're going to see in other examples, um, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. We could have carbon or some other compound that um, is here in, in a different reaction. Um, but it doesn't matter because all of them are starting at the elements in their reference uh, states. So now what's basically happening is, is what we're, uh, when we go from the element in the reference form to make the gas, we go down to make the H2O gas to be, and, and the difference here, and this is going to be at minus 241.8 kilojoules. And if we were to do the same thing uh, for the liquid, we're going to go down a little bit further, and we're going to get this liquid to be at minus 285.8 kilojoules. So this is the H2O liquid over here. And you can see that there's a little bit of an offset between them. And this is the difference in the delta H of formation. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't put delta H of formation. That's the difference there between those two compounds. Um, so what, we're, what we can do is, is if we want to figure out this delta, if we want to figure out this delta H of reaction, we can compare where the H2O liquid is relative to where the H2O gas is, because this is our um, reactant and this is our product. So in essence, we're going from H2O gas to H2O liquid. And that means we're going down by another um, 44, it looks like it's, it's, about, it's about 44 kilojoules to get from 241.8 to 285.8. So the difference here is uh, 44 kilojoules minus 44 kilojoules between the H2O gas and the H2O liquid. So that is our delta H of reaction. The difference between where our reactants are and where our product is, remember when we want to write out a enthalpy diagram, 
for our products and our reactants, we have our H2O uh, gas up here and we have our H2O liquid up down here. We know the difference now is going to be the difference between the 241.8 and the 285.8. That's where those two are relative to zero. So we can say that the products minus the reactants is going to be our, um, our enthalpy change. So that 44 kilojoule difference, or the two minus 285.8 kilojoules minus the negative 241.8 kilojoules, that's the difference between those two positions, which is the minus 44 kilojoules, is our enthalpy of reaction. So we get minus 44 kilojoules here. So what we really can say is we can really define an equation that allows us to do this without necessarily having to set all of this up every time. So from what we, pro what we just proved, so from what we just proved, we can say that delta H of a reaction under standard conditions is going to equal the sum of the standard heats of formation of the products times the number of moles of each one of those minus the sum of the delta H of formation of the reactants times their number of moles. So in essence, what we're doing is, is we're figuring out where are all of our products sitting relative to that zero, where are all of our reactants sitting relative to that zero, and then we're taking the difference between the two, and that difference between the two is going to be the difference between the position of the products and the position of the reactants in enthalpy, and that's going to give us our delta H of reaction. So that's what that setup showed um, from the H2O liquid to H2O gas example. So we can do a quick uh, we can do a quick example. Let's let's do the example of C three H eight gas plus five O two gas goes to three C O two gas plus four H two O liquid, and we want to get delta H of reaction from this. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to go and I have to look up. Um, I have to go and I have to look up some things. So we need to get the delta H of formation for some of these compounds, and we're going to kind of create a table. So we're going to have the compound, and we're going to have the delta H of formation. So if you go and look this up for C three H eight, that's going to be minus one hundred four point seven kilojoules, and if you look up the O two. You don't even have to look this one up. Oxygen is an element in its standard state, so that's going to get zero kilojoules. Now, uh, for carbon dioxide, if we look that one up, that's going to be minus 393.5 kilojoules. And if we look up water, liquid, that's going to be minus 285.8 kilojoules. Now, notice how this is important. The phases make a difference here. So when you go and you look something up, you have to make sure you're not only looking up the correct substance, that you're looking up the correct phase. Because as we showed, H2O gas and H2O liquid have different delta H of formation. So now let's set up our equation here. So we want to get our delta H of reaction. So we're going to start looking at our products. So our three CO2s. So we're going to, we're going to do for that is we're going to put in three times the amount for the CO2, which is minus 393.5 kilojoules. And I like to just put my um, I like to put my uh, reactants in brackets. I'm sorry, my products in brackets and my reactants in brackets. So we took care of CO2, and then we're going to add to that the four H2O liquids. So we're going to put plus four times the H2O, which is minus 285.8 kilojoules. And when we add this up, what we're doing is this value. If we were to draw out our enthalpy diagram. This is for our products. So when we do this, this value is setting the location of that in our enthalpy diagram. And then when we do our, our reactants, we have our C3H8. So that's going to be 1 times the minus 104.7 kilojoules. And then our oxygen doesn't appear in there because it's an element in standard state. So these are our reactants up here. So this is our C3H8 plus our O2. And this is our 3CO2 plus 4H2O down here. So this sets up here, and we take the difference 
and this difference is our delta H of reaction. So that's why we set this up this way. So we use the delta H of formation to figure out what that line is and what this line is in that, in that thing, in that diagram. And we get for a delta H of reaction in this case, so if you do the math, you get uh, 2219 kilojoules, and there should be a minus sign um, for that. So you get minus 2219 kilojoules. So that shows you how to do the setup and the calculations. So let's do a quick practice problem. So we're going to do one of these because it's pretty self-explanatory uh, once you've done one. So we're just going to do the first one. So it says calculate the standard enthalpy change for the reaction 3NO2 plus H2O liquid goes to uh, 2HNO3 plus NO gas. So we'll set this up. So what this thing wants to know is what is the delta H of reaction for this guy. So we're going to set up our equation. Delta H naught of the reaction is going to equal, and then we're going to put our brackets. So we're going to have our product. So we're going to find 2 times HNO3. So that's going to be 2 times 206.6 minus 206.6 kilojoules. Uh, and then we're going to add to that the NO gas, which is plus the 90.3 kilojoules. And then we're going to close brackets because that's our end of our products. And then we're going to do our brackets. So then we're going to do 3 times the NO2, which is positive 33.2 kilojoules. And then we're going to add to that our H2O, which is 1 times minus 285.8 kilojoules. And, you know, you can make the one optional. You saw that I didn't put a one here because I know it's going to be the same thing, but I, you could put the one if you want. It just depends on, you know, how, how you want to show it. But uh, you don't need to put the one. Uh, we'll recognize when we grade it that it's a one. So and then we close brackets over there. And now we have our energy differences in the enthalpy diagram set up because of these are standard heats of formation. So then when we do our calculation, delta H naught of reaction is going to equal minus 136.7 kilojoules. Now I'm just gonna, we're just gonna take a look at this lower one down here real quick. We're not actually really gonna do the full thing, but I wanna point out because it's a good one. So this one says calculate the delta H of formation for FeCl2. So you'll notice that there is a, we, there is FeCl2, but we don't have the delta H of formation. We do have delta H of reaction. So when you set this one up, we're gonna put in our minus 115.4 kilojoules and then we're going to set up our products minus our reactants. So our products in this case are going to be 2 times FeCl3, which we have. So that's going to be 2 times minus 400 kilojoules. And then we're going to subtract from that our reactants, which is going to be our 2 times X. We don't know what the FeCl2 is plus our zero kilojoules, which is the Cl2. And remember, we may not give you this on the exam because you're supposed to know that Cl2 is an element in its standard state. So in this case, if you were to solve out with the algebra, you would get a delta H of formation for the FeCl2 as, uh, and you solve for X, would be minus 342.3 kilojoules.